Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to do a little product render of this beer bottle that I've already got set up here. Um, I'm not going to go to, through how to model and texture the beer. Um, that's pretty straightforward and this is sort of more a lighting tutorial. So uh, we'll go through a little bit of how I'm going to set up this, the, uh, the geometry for the studio setup. So the first thing is we've got this ground plane here which I've just made out of a little box you could just use a plane it doesn't really matter um, but the material is the important part so we'll just have a look at it in the hypershade editor all I really wanted for this is for it to be a black diffuse color um, with um, reflection and roughness and this is just going to allow the beer bottle to be reflected in the floor and then it's going to be a little bit blurry and once we see the render we'll have a better understanding of that what's what that looks like but we're going to send, set this up piece by piece the next thing we want to set up is a backdrop um, in a studio setup you'd often use something like a matte painted background um, so we're going to do something fairly similar by creating a plane and we will change this to uh, 4 by 4 3 by 3 and I'll just move this back and we're just going to make a curved background so we'll grab the top vertex like so and move them up and then the next ones and then we'll subdivide that just using the three key on the keyboard and put that roughly there and we just want to make sure that the background is going to cover the entire shot now we need to put a light in for this backdrop so we'll just move that back a touch and um, we'll grab a redshift area light and we're going to change this into a spot so we'll just go to the attribute editor there and change that to a spotlight rotate that for this shot to keep everything simple i'm keeping everything on the keeping everything in the zero position uh in the x so everything's going to be lined up directly down the center and this includes our camera which i'll cover just before we do our render so with our spot we'll just move that down and up and now we will open up the render previewer all right, so you'll see here with the spot, we're starting to get a silhouette being described for our bottle. And for your reference, my render settings are um, just GI. You could use like Irradiance Point Cache if you want. And if you want it to go a bit faster, you can just lower the samples per pixels for it. That's good for things like really flat uh, white backgrounds. Um, it will render them up a little bit quicker. But what we're really looking for here is just sort of a nice a, a nice contrasting value probably somewhere in the mid-tones like a 0.5 gray and we just want it to roughly reach the top and then we want it to have a nice fall off toward the edge so we can either adjust the cone angle to make it wider or more narrow probably 40 is actually going to be pretty good and then you can adjust the fall off angle to make it softer or tighter we'll probably have it at about 12 looks okay and then the curve can adjust obviously the way that the fall off curve works might soften it a little bit and make it a bit bigger most of these sort of product shots you'd have like magazine layout so it's going to be um, portrait rather than landscape but i'm just going to have this set up in landscape now that we've got that rendered up we'll actually just increase the value maybe a little bit maybe to one your values will change you'll need to obviously pay attention to the value which is how light or dark your lights are to make a decision as to what you're going to do here and we also need a decision as to whether or not we want this um, wall here to be reflected in the foreground I actually don't think it looks too bad I might change my mind once we get the key and the uh, rim lights in but we'll have a look let's have a talk about the camera now um, you'll see I've got a focal length of 80 for these sorts of product shots you'll usually use a longer lens um, usually something between 70 and 100 is fairly common for if you're doing inside studio photography um, outside you might use something a little bit longer if you want to it, with a longer focal length you're just going to get a little bit more compression in the perspective so it makes everything look a little bit flatter so to speak um, and it will also allow you to use a, an f-stop which will give you a, a, a wider amount of um, depth of field so I have depth of field enabled yeah I've got an f-stop of 8 and the focus distance is 55 which is just the distance from the camera to the um, bottle I didn't set up this to be 
procedural or anything like that. So I, I just set it up manually because I couldn't be bothered setting up all the measuring tools and stuff, but you can do it that way as well. I have a tutorial on how to do that from like 2015, I think, if you want to check that out. I think it still kind of works the same way. Um, and yeah, so finally, the the reason we have depth of field in is obviously so the foreground's in focus and the background's out of focus. And we can also add in some texture to our background, which is fairly common in studio photography to have like a, a mixed color value background for portrait photography in particular. For this, you could use a flat color. You can do whatever you want. It's sort of up to you. It's up to your art direction. Um, I've already got one set up. Basically, all I did was use a um, max and noise just with random noise. And what I'll do is I'll apply it. So you can see the difference. So it's just going to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. Um, it's sort of a cloudy effect. And because it's out of focus, it's nice. Um, it's got a nice fall off between all the values. And now that we're looking at it with that texture on it, it actually makes me want to change the fall off value of our, of our light, which I'm just going to balance out with the cone angle. So I think something like that will do. The only thing I don't like here is that because of the noise, the side's becoming a little bit unbalanced. So I might just randomize that. Just wanted to make sure there's a good balance between um, the darks and the whites on either side. So let's get some lights on our subject. So we'll just use another area light here and we'll turn that around. Okay, so you can see it's starting to light up our subject nicely. Obviously you'll see that I've already materialed and textured this uh, beer bottle. I'll go over through those go through those materials a little bit for where they're important. Um, you may not have bubbles because you haven't got Houdini to do it quickly and easily like I do. The bubbles I've put on aren't very exciting so if you want to do better ones obviously you can do them, randomize them a bit more. If you don't have um, condensation um, droplets um, that's fine, you can still use the same techniques. You will just need to make some adjustments for maybe your rim lighting. Because I'm using the droplets the kind of act as the rim lights where with them having them off you see you don't get much rim light so you would actually need to have more of a side on uh, light. So I would probably do something like this, you know, to get more of the um, silhouette of your beer bottle illuminated. And then obviously you want to make the light not visible either. But because I've got the um, droplets, we're going to be rendering it with the droplets. So let's increase the value a little bit. What I want to see here is I don't want to have too much of this reflection occurring um, and I might see if light linking affects that. When you're working with translucent and reflective objects for product photography and rendering um, it is actually quite difficult. It's certainly much easier to do in CG because we can light link which will um, save you a great deal of time. Um, but we want to make sure that the ground is not being illuminated by that so that will help there just so we can control that light a bit better. And then we'll see if they're making it a little bit wider will help to get some more of the silhouette here because I want these um, bubbles to be lit. I may need to bring it back a bit as well. So we just want to ensure we've got good contrast between these, I keep calling them bubbles, sorry, these droplets and the background. So they probably want to be a value of one or very close to one for the most part. And then we've got a mid-tone in the background. And then our foreground is sort of much darker, obviously. Um, so we'll call that light okay, and I'm not 100% sold on it because I want to have a little bit more illumination at the top here. So what I'm going to do is create a duplicate of it and move that up and skinny it out. And something you can do here is you can actually turn the visibility off if you just want to get that a little bit more highlights on the top there, um, which may help. But what I do want to see is this area here of the bottle should be a uh, lighter value. See, it's too dark. It's starting to mix with the foreground um, value. So we want to actually make that visible. But we might want to balance out the value a little bit. And I just want to make sure that we're getting it to follow the whole way through. So now the liquid is essentially illuminated here and we've got lighting on all our bubbles. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. We may go through and change that a little bit. All right, so now one thing I will do is those droplets on the lids. I'm just gonna make another duplicate of this light here. I'm just gonna make this very small. That's okay. I'm not 100% certain whether I'll keep that, but we'll see how we go. 
So we've got the silhouette, we've got the midtones in there. Um, now we just need to be able to see what the heck this product is. So we know it's a beer bottle, but we don't know the brand or anything like that. So there's two things that we need to light here. That's the label and the lid also. So we're going to add in a new light here, and this is going to be our key light essentially. Uh, this doesn't need to be visible. And we're going to light link this just to the bottle, I think. So we don't get any of that spill. These lights here aren't light linked and they're not too bad. I might pull them off the back of uh, the floor though. Um, we'll have a look at once we get closer to the end. So I want to make sure that the label here is lit. Um, it is. It's probably a little bit bright because I don't want these um, this area here to be blown out. So we'll just bring it in slowly till we get to a value that we want. Thinking like 55. And actually I just noticed that my I had my monitor set to dim uh, to protect my eyes. So I'm looking at it now and everything's a lot brighter. So we're definitely going to have that down. And actually something you can do that you can't do in real life is affect the ray contribution and we can just turn off specular. And now we get a nice illumination of just the label which is pretty good. So we could also change this to be a spot. Um, so we can just get a nice amount of isolation. Point this at the label and ensure that it's fairly tight. So I'm going to have it sort of like this and then we will increase the fall off angle and curve and then just adjust the cone angle out. About 55 should do it. So we're getting nice contrast here with our um, label, our brand. And obviously that's the most important thing because that's what you want people to remember. And then we're getting similar values on the rim. So it's sort of capturing your attention into the center here. And we've got some nice mid-tones on the label. And um, that probably is a little bit highlighted there. I might pull that back a little bit. Maybe something like that. Because of the color of the light, we're still going to get a lot of rim light, even if we lower the value. Um, and also because of the material being a translucent water type material. So that will be OK. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to light link those all the lights there for to be just on the bottle and I should rename these. This is going to be all right. So I've just light linked those through so we don't have any extra spill and I'm going to rename that to be backdrop diffuse. <coughs> and I think I actually want to tighten up this spotlight now that I look at it. So something like this. All right, and then finally, there's just one last light we need to put in, which is the lid, because we can't see what color it is. And that's kind of part of the branding. So we want to put in one final light, pop that up the top there. So now we know it's a red bottle cap, which all these things are identifiers to a consumer essentially. So you want to make sure that if it's from an advertising perspective, the consumer of the product is able to quickly identify these if things if they see them in a store or on a, on a shelf or whatever. And um, so that's going to be part of your job when you're art directing. So let's make sure that we make this light not visible. And then we will link it just to the lid and we'll turn it off everything and then just to re-enable it for the lid. And then we'll change the value. Okay, that seems pretty much right to me. Now, in my previous render, I actually had this on affecting specular so you can make a decision whether or not you want to be able to see specular highlights on the front uh, a lot of the time they'd be photoshopped out um, you could use an overhead though to capture that specularity if you want so just ignoring everything else that's happening we get a little bit more of this um, and we'll just quickly light link those so I can show you what that really looks like and because that's on you may want to um, light link it away from the lid or just change its position slightly so we don't get too many highlights up here because you don't really want to be looking up here you want to be looking at the label um, that doesn't look too bad though honestly because it's actually capturing a bit more of this condensation on the outside and um, maybe creating a little bit of extra visual interest that's that's one other reason you'd use condensation and and bubbles of water on the outside um, droplets is because of the variety it applies to your subject but because the label is so flat it actually is very noisy around it and then it sort of draws the eye into a simpler area 
and this is sort of getting a bit complex but it's just sort of a bit of design theory really for you and I'll just talk a little bit about the materials finally here um, I'm not going to go through how to set them up but um, bottle cap that's pretty straightforward um, the beer is just a um, liquid um, so just set up like glass essentially just with an amberish color to mimic the color of beer um, got a little bit of roughness just so it captures a little bit more of the reflection uh, but that's not really the difficult thing to material the thing that you really want to work on is the beer bottle itself so I've used the material blender here um, here's my shading setup and what's happening is I've just got the glass on one layer and then the label on another and then this just allows me to affect different things the label does have some specularity to it but it's fairly rough otherwise it has a little bit of bump map to it um, it's just to give the label like a little bit of texture which you can't really see in this render um, but also the bump map is allowing it to stick away from the surface which means the label itself is actually going to capture that highlight on the top edge there the glass which has got all the condensation and stuff mapped onto it the condensation is just a max on noise um, applied to a bump map which is running and if I switch to my perspective camera you'll see that from the from the the shot camera it looks okay but from the perspective camera actually this bottle doesn't look particularly exciting this is all just smoke and mirrors really and the condensation itself if you look at the noise it's not very exciting it's actually quite triangular but at the distance that we're working with it doesn't really matter I just wanted fine bumpiness to the surface so ultimately we got a little bit of variety in the uh, surface characteristics and if it was too smooth it wouldn't make sense with these droplets because obviously with droplets there should be condensation you're assuming it's coming out of a, a fridge or something like that something else that we do in product photography is we treat the bottles um, sometimes for the for the shoot you can do this with reflect, uh, reflection roughness because I got the roughness uh, plugged into the inverse of the noise just basically so the areas that are not bumped are slightly rough and you can see this if I change the value so your roughness is going to be your condensation in this case and as you and what what you can do is use that roughness if you say for instance want a much more smooth condensation effect you could use a ramp assuming that you've UV'd your bottle um, from bottom to top but something that can be useful for it is that it creates a real nice glow with your bottle this isn't a the only way to light a beer bottle there are so many ways you could do this you could have more cast shadows if you're trying to make it look a lot more moody your environment is important so what it's sitting on it, you know something more rustic like wooden um, crates and that sort of thing but I just wanted to show you like a really sort of fairly simple way to set up with minimal amount of lights I could have even done it with like two if I really wanted to you can do it with one in all honesty but it would be kind of more difficult to set up I think using a lot of lights to start with and then working your way back and seeing how challenging yourself to use less and less lights but get an interesting result an appealing result um, is, a, is a good actual a good exercise for photography and lighting and rendering but yeah this isn't prescriptive you can set it up however you want this is just an example of one way to do it that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below